Hi all, in this mini tutorial we're going to use JavaScript to create some graphics. We're going to create a ball, well, a square, that bounces around a game field. And we're going to use HTML Canvas to do this. So first thing, go ahead and download this template from the link below. And update the div here to a canvas instead. Canvas. And the ID, the ID we'll just call Game Canvas. We can also set the, the field width and height here. So we'll set it to 400 and the height, let's set it to say 300. So 400 width, 300 height. You could set this in code if you wanted to, but as ours will be staying the same, let's just keep it like that. Declare some variables. Well, we're gonna have a constant frame rate, aren't we? So let's set the frame rate. So the FPS, frames per second, will equal 30. We're going to have some ball dimensions, so we'll call one BS for ball size. <laughs> and we'll set that to 30. And we'll have the ball X and Y location as well, so we'll call that BX and BY. BX and BY, that'll be constantly updating, won't it, every frame to move the ball across the screen. We'll also have the velocity of the ball, so how, how fast will it move? So this will be in pixels per frame. So the X velocity and the Y velocity. And we also need a variable for the canvas and its context. We'll see that soon. So canvas, we can just get that from using the document, get element by ID. And the ID is just the game canvas, is the string that we set before, so game canvas. To get context, we just get that from the canvas. So canvas.getContext, and we're going to put 2D in here. So we're going to get the 2D context, as ours is a 2D game. Good. Now to set up the game loop, we can use the inbuilt function setInterval. So setInterval just calls something every certain amount of time. It takes a handler, so the handler will just call update, so it'll be a function that it calls. And the timeout, how often does it call it? This is in milliseconds, so a thousand divided by our FPS. So that, that'll call this, it'll call the update function every one thirtieth of a second, which is good. Now the ball starting position, so that'll be the BX and the BY. Where do we want to start it? You could set it in a random location if you wanted to, but let's just keep it simple. We'll say that it's in the middle of the screen, middle of the game field. So ball X will be the canvas dot width divided by two. That's in the middle, isn't it? Similarly, the ball Y position, the BY, will be the canvas dot height divided by two. So that'll be at 150. So the coordinates for the ball at, the f at first will be 200, 150. Random ball starting speed. Let's say we want a speed between 100 and 200 uh, pixels per second. So PPS, pixels per second. In order to get that range, we'll need to use a math random function. So X v, the x velocity, will equal math random. Math random creates a value between 0 and 1, not including 1. So we'll have to multiply that to get higher numbers. We'll multiply it by 101, remembering that 101 itself will not be included, plus 100. So that'll give us a range, that'll give us a maximum of 200 and a minimum of 100, which is what we want. We want to round that down to the nearest integer, so we can use the math floor function, math floor function. That's in pixels per second. We want pixels per frame. So we just need to divide all of that by the frames per second. We can do the same thing for the Y velocity. The reason we don't want the X velocity and the Y velocity to be the same, well they could be randomly, is so that the direction of the ball is random. I think we should go ahead and test some of this stuff. So to do that, we'll have to write our update function, or at least part of it. Function update. OK. 
Okay. Move the ball. To move the ball, all we have to do is modify the location of the ball. So bx plus equals the x velocity. So every frame, the x location will move, will shift that amount. And in the same vein, the ball's y position will be plus equal the y velocity. That's all we have to do. We won't worry about bouncing the ball off each wall just yet. We're just going to test if this the graphics are working. Draw background and ball. In order to do that, we need to context, set the context fill style. Fill style equals, now this is just a string we can pass. Just the color is enough. So there's a whole bunch of HTML colors. We'll set the background to black. So just B-L-A-C-K. And we have to draw the rectangle. So we do that by running the method fill rectangle. Now this requires number, 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 number. So that's the X, the Y, the W, the width and the height. So the X will be zero. The Y will be zero. The width is the canvas width. And the height, obviously, is the canvas height. Let's run that just to make sure that the canvas is being drawn, the background. There it is. Good. Now, to draw the ball, we'll have to set the context fill style again, because we don't want to leave it at black, do we? Otherwise, we'll have a black ball on a black background. Fill style equals... I'll just say yellow. And again, we need to do a rectangle. Now, how will we draw the ball rectangle, do you think? Well, its location will be the BX, the ball's X position. Now, to technically center it on at that location, we'll have to subtract half its width. So minus the ball size divided by two. Same thing for the BY, so BY, BY minus the ball's y position, sorry, the ball's size divided by 2. And the width of the rectangle will be the ball's size, and the height of the the height of the ball will be the ball size. Let's test that. Did you see it? If we keep resetting, you can see that it's going in a random a random direction but always in a positive direction. Just looking at that, I'm thinking we'll probably need to set the angle, set the range a bit more, and maybe 200 is a bit fast, I think. So let's change the random bill, sorry, the random ball starting speed to be to be between say 50 and 100. Maybe that will be enough. Maybe change it to even lower. So we'll say 25 and 100. So to do that, so the maximum will be one, so 25 and 100. So we'll have to have plus 25 here, won't we? And we'll have 76 here, 76. Let's just test that. That looks a bit better. Okay, good. It's not bouncing as you can see, it just keeps going off the screen. No worries, we can fix that. Okay, random ball direction. As you can tell, it was going always to the towards the lower left. Sorry, the lower right. So we fix that up by just simply um, setting up a, a, basically a coin toss. So if math random times two. So this will we'll have to find the floor of this too. Math floor. Math random times two equals zero. So what will that do? So math random will be a number times two. So it'll be between zero and one. So that'll be between zero and two, not including two. And we're finding the floor of that. So there's only two results, zero or one. So it's effectively a 50% chance of getting zero, right? So that's how you can handle any sort of coin toss situation. So if that equals zero, then we're going to set xv will equal minus xv. That'll mean it'll be going in the other direction. Do the same thing for the y 
velocity. So again, this just will be random. It could be 50% chance it's going that way or 50% chance it's going the other way. Test that. So it's going up left, up right, up right, up left, bottom left, bottom left, bottom left, bottom up, 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 bottom right. There we go. It's going in all four directions randomly. Good. So that's the ball direction done. Now the update function, we've got the ball moving, we're drawing it. The only thing we have to do now is bounce the ball off each wall. Now how do we do that? We'll have to put some conditions in here to uh, detect the wall or detect when we're near the wall. So if the ball X is less than zero, that means it's gone off the left of the screen, right? Um, actually it'll be the ball X minus the size of the half the size of the ball, right? BS divided by two. If that's less than zero and the X velocity is less than zero, so that means it's traveling towards the left, then we want to switch the X velocity. X velocity will equal minus X velocity, so it'll start going the other way in the X direction. Similarly, If the ball x plus the ball size divided by 2 is greater than the canvas width and x velocity is greater than 0, that means it's traveling in a positive direction, we want to do the same thing. Now we have to do the same sort of thing for the y direction. If the ball y minus the ball size divided by 2 is less than 0 and yv is less than 0, then we want to switch yv. yv equals minus yv. If the ball y, so the y position plus half the ball size, is greater than the canvas height, so this is traveling in downwards, and yv is greater than zero, then yv will equal minus yv. We're going to bounce it. Let's try it. So there's the ball going upwards. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So it's bounced off three walls so far. Let's see if it bounces off the left wall correctly. Yep, there we go. And that's how we use JavaScript to create a bouncy ball effect on a game canvas. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments section below. Until next time, cheers!